you're not a good teacher. You're a bad teacher. Let's face it, we've all felt this at one moment or another. And even if we zoom out and take a look at our lives, I know myself personally, there's been many times in my life where I just felt I didn't measure up. Whether it was that exam in secondary school that I failed, I got like 3% in my math test. Whether it was that time I didn't get picked for the basketball team, even though I was six foot seven at 16 years of age. When it was looking around at every other bass player in my little town in Ireland and thinking, they're a better musician than I am and I'll never be good enough and everybody will always think that I'm bad. And then even after I finished my own Celtic course and began teaching and looking around and listening to other teachers thinking, oh my goodness, they're all so much more knowledgeable than me. They know the grammar, they know the pronunciation, they know all of the skills and the systems and how to teach them effectively. And soon I'm gonna be found out for being the fraud that I am. I've certainly looked in the mirror and told myself, you're a bad teacher, you're not good enough. You know, I remembered in those early days, even up until when I went to do my Delta, there was aspects of grammar that felt like a secret shame to me that I didn't know what they were. I remember even relative clauses. And this is something that, you know, we teach pretty regularly. I couldn't really have told you what it was. And I certainly wasn't comfortable teaching it. Um, phonemic transcription, I just avoided it entirely. My classroom management, I knew it was made up or makey uppy at best. But I don't want to give you the wrong impression as well. You know, I, I didn't despair in these times. I knew inside me, I'm teaching because I love this and maybe I'm not there yet, but I'll get there. You know, on this channel, I have a number of videos on how to get an A in your CELTA. And I freely admit to anybody I work with on a consultancy basis or on a CELTA course, I didn't get an A in my own course. However, what I would say was six months after my course, I was at the same standard as somebody who got an A. Why? It just took me some time to learn what a relative clause was, to start using that phonemic transcription, to be open with my colleagues in the teacher's room and my director of studies that, hey, I, I'm not comfortable with this lesson. Do you have some ideas? Can you help me? I realized as well at one point that there's always going to be somebody who knows more than me or you or anybody about this or that topic. You know, there might be one thing that I know a lot about, but I'm going to meet a teacher. Even one of you watching there may have an insight on relative clauses again or whatever it may be uh, that I haven't considered. And, you know, it's always going to be that way, no matter what we do. Even if I go back to my basketball or currently bass playing days, there's certainly people out there who are better than me who I can learn from. So accepting that and not seeing it so much as a weakness, but an opportunity to always grow, to me, that makes everything kind of seemed worthwhile and keeps life interesting. You know, I often say to trainees that I'm working with on a Celtic course, you know, don't be Fergus, be yourself. And, you know, that may sound obvious, but the reason I say it is because sometimes trainees say to me, oh, it seems so effortless for you, but it's so hard for me. And they're, they're trying to deliver things in the way that I do. You know, I, I just, I'm myself, you know, I'm not trying to be anybody else. I'm just myself. So I have my way of talking. I have my way of using my hands, of using my eyes, of my expressions, etc. You know, that, that's just me. And you know, we all do that, but we do it in our own way. Even the way that I generate rapport with my students, the way that I have chit chat with them or whatever it is, uh, the, the way that I present my materials. All of these things have a little part of me on them. And I would suggest that the same should go for you. Bring an aspect of yourself, personalize, not just the material itself with a photograph from your life or whatever it may be, which is you know, often a good idea, but you know, bring your own personality. Even if you're working with lower level students where you find you, know, you really have to uh, grade your language and 
you know, do things a different way and uh, less flowingly than you would with higher level students, you can still bring even your own humor uh, to those situations. So do it. I often say as well, be humble, but don't self-flagellate. What do I mean by that? Let's think about on a CELTA course. When you finish your teaching practice, any one of your teaching practices, one of the first things you have to do right away is a self-evaluation. If you look at any self-evaluation at any center all around the world, you're not asked to write down all of the things that went wrong in your lesson. In fact, you're asked to identify things that went well. Now, your lesson could have been a complete disaster and may have ended up being a below standard lesson. Sure, but there has to be something that you can find amongst that uh, uh, fallout of a poor lesson that you did well. And that isn't just an unnecessary feel-good thing. It's absolutely necessary because if you want to build, you have to build on something else. So you, you need to identify at least one thing that went well, whether it's even just the beginning of your lesson where, let's say, you managed to speak in front of the class. For a lot of people, that's an achievement, that kind of public speaking. So put that down. I managed to speak and speak clearly. Let's say I managed to give some instructions that were good. I managed to set up tasks. I managed to uh, hand tasks over to my learners all the way up to things that went really well. You know, like let's say you managed to do some really effective delayed or cold correction. You managed uh, some really interesting interaction patterns like a pyramid discussion or something like that. You need to identify the things that went well. But remember what I said, we got to be humble, but don't self-flagellate. So, you know, it can't be, yeah, I, I nailed that. You need to identify things uh, for you to work on as well, but it can't all be about how terrible you are either. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever felt this kind of sensation where you're unsure about yourself if you're cut out for this? And how did you get past that? How did you start to feel more confident about your teaching? That's it for me now. Thank you so much for watching. I, I'd just like to ask you a favor. You know, if you find some value in this video, please do hit that like button and I'd be ever so grateful if you would share this with somebody you think may find some value in it. Of course, you can always contact me if you're looking for a consultation, if you're preparing for a CELTIC course, or if you're currently on a course and you need some more help, please feel free to reach out to me via email, or you can contact me via my new website. And if you click the book of an appointment button there, you get the opportunity for a free 30 minute consultation with me where we can figure out a strategy for you. Okay, uh, that's it for me from this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.